Oh gosh. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show we have Leslie Wara. Leslie, thank you so much for joining us. Hi there. <laughs> My kid is also here uh due to the pandemic. So Yeah, uh, special special guest appearance. Special guest by Elliot. Two year old Elliot is <laughs> She's working in the background. <laughs> yeah, she's actually running the show in the background. So we, no, you know, we this just is the showrunner right here. This is behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Leslie, um, I, you know, I, I, I've known Leslie for years. Um, she and I have been friends for for a long time. We both live here in Portland, yeah. and. Um, yeah, so so like she she's like one of my favorite people in the world, but I'm not going to steal your thunder. So if you want to if you want to give a background of kind of you know just whatever whatever you want to talk about, tell tell the chat who you are. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I feel like this is pretty common with designers that I know. I don't know any designer that actually like meant to like end up as a designer, but if there are some <laughs> out there, give me a holler because uh, I would love to know who actually like stumbled into this profession on purpose. Um, I started out uh, as uh, do doing marketing, uh, like just st strategy, marketing strategy. So I was working in a PR firm um, doing marketing strategy. There's a woman there who was the designer who was from Alaska and she had a red mohawk and I thought she was just the coolest. So I started taking some design classes and I ended up doing design and uh, I started doing graphic design um, back when that was like a thing that you actually said. I feel like that's not really a very common term anymore, but because um, there was like that distinction between doing graphics and doing like web design. Mm -hmm. um, and now everybody kind of just does it all because the tools have changed so much, but, um, yeah, it, well, it was such an interesting shift, right? Because like I, yeah. so I, I actually started out as a graphic designer too. Um, but I only designed like physical media. I would design posters yeah. and books and, and yeah. stuff like that. Same. Same. Yeah. I was print, print design. Print, print design. Is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a word. I used Quark too. I don't know if anybody. Oh my God! That. Yes. Who remembers Quark? <laughs> I do it's remember that. Quark. I actually, um, I had a class with a woman who did graphic design back in like the issues of older woman, and she did graphic design back in like the eighties when they used to do everything on like photocopier paper, and they would do like oh. photocopy upon photocopy of of different things to sort of like that's how that was accomplished was that's like wild. Using photocopier and you would actually like go in and like edit stuff like using exacto knives like scratching them out and like white out was like a th it was crazy you would just like things before there was computer aided design it was all done by hand like drawing drafting it, I, it was wild <laughs> yeah i'm i'm very glad that i that i didn't come in at that time because i don't know if i would have stuck with it i i've yeah, always I, any I like hands-on yeah, it, I appreciated why she was showing it to us. It was like more of a <laughs> historical sort of education than anything really like applicable. But um, mm -hmm. boy, yeah, the the times have changed so so quickly. It, um, and uh, you know, designers are are evolving just as fast as like tech tech is evolving too. And uh, and it's been a, it's been a wild ride. So I always feel like I'm learning. So again, like. Uh, we're, we're going to be using Figma. So if you see that I'm not doing something in Figma that you know how to do something, <laughs> please feel free to um, to interrupt and provide me with the shortcut because I'm always learning too. Yeah, the the chat is uh, is always very helpful with shortcuts and, and things like that. Uh, we've also yeah. we've got some fellow fellow former graphic designers in chat. People remembering Quark. Lots of I good good sandwich jokes it. already. Chris is ready I for the, the hot Somebody dog. Somebody does stream. remember Quark. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I remember learning Quark and InDesign simultaneously because mm. we had to know both of them because you never knew which environment you were going to get into, like what job, like the way they would be like, are you a Mac or PC or something user? It used to be like Quark or InDesign, you know? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Now, now I don't even use InDesign at all. I'm sorry, Adobe. Um, I uh, I hardly work in there. I'm um, same. I've been noticing that like the Adobe Creative Suite has has been less and less of what I do. Exactly. Um, There's just, I remember when sketch came out actually. And I was like, Oh, sketch is never going to replace what I use illustrator for. Um, and I still do use illustrator. It's probably the only one I really open up anymore, mm -hmm. but, um, I Photoshop very rarely too, but 
for gifts, you know, for, for yeah, non- exactly. Work, right. For <laughs> things like yep. for, for messing around jokes now, mostly. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but yeah, ske- and now even sketch, I don't even use sketch so much anymore. Now I use Figma all day long. So um, Same. I love it. I think the, the, the switch that really flipped when I saw Figma was uh, what we're going to do today, where you can work in, um, in the same document in real time and follow totally. each other's work around. That um, is going to be, especially now with like the, um, the remoteness of everybody mm-hmm. working, is that collaborative um, canvas, if you will. Like um, mm-hmm. I use another program called Mural. Have you ever used yeah. Mural? Yeah, I love Mural. I've been posting. Um, so right now I'm working on um, a contract with uh, Nike. I'm doing some like service design work for them. And we um, basically post, you know, all of our stuff into Mural and everybody gets in there like just like anywhere between like my immediate team, which is about five people to like 20 people for the broader team. And mm-hmm. everybody just gets in there and like posts notes. And it's just an extremely collaborative space. And yeah. Everybody, is able to sort of, um, you know, make comments and things and we're able to, you know, without permanently damaging any of the work. And it's, it's a very, very like efficient way to work. So I think that's really the future is, is that kind of a space. So, yeah. So, so speaking of, of collaborative design, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Yeah. Um, so Leslie, uh, is actually, I've talked about this before, but I have, um, I have this kind of recurring, dinner group that that uh that i you know we we get together we cook and and all that and i've I've lovingly called it the steadily escalating dinner party (laughs) and um leslie and her husband matt are part of this like we we get together and we try to outcook each other leslie is also one of the best bakers that i've ever met um she consistently (laughs) brings like show-stopping desserts um and so we we are all um always very very happy whenever leslie's going to show up with dessert <laughs> um, I, do. I love to make dessert and it's great to share you yeah can't just eat. i have eaten things by myself and there's such a sense of shame <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there shouldn't, well, I mean, be. This, there well, shouldn't but, be that's conditioned but uh you know so, well, every, you know, every dessert is a personal dessert if you believe in yourself, right? <laughs> true. It's true, really. Like, it's really how you, how you, a matter of perspective. Oh, Chris. Um, Chris. No, Chris. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, we should make a corgi cake. I would Ooh, love we that. should make a corgi cake. That would be very pop. I bet we could get Chris to come up and visit, like, once we can all get back oh. in the same place. Um, I, Chris is in. <laughs> I think that would be a great project. That would be a super we fun do a project. Twitch with just a ba- a baking Twitch. We should do. We so, want to learn how to do that. Marissa and I have been doing Sunday morning like cooking right, streams, right? right? And That's so right. once we can all get back together again, we I would love to do that where we can do more like collaborative stuff. Um, because that would be super fun. Because you know I don't yeah. know how to. I've never decorated a cake. I've I've done sugar cookies. That's as far as I've ever gotten. So, uh, so it'd be super fun to, to do that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, so, um, what we're trying to do today is actually something that spawned from the steadily escalating dinner party. We, we had this idea for like, you know, the holidays were coming up and we were talking about secret Santa and we, we'd, we'd kind of kicked around this idea like, Oh, should we do a secret Santa? Should we do a white elephant? And, um, I, I think it was Marissa had the idea to do instead of secret Santa secret sandwich where we would all draw a name out of a hat and then whoever's name you draw you drew you had to make a sandwich that you thought they would see themselves in like they would they would personally identify with the sandwich right and the game was that you would we would take all the sandwiches that were made and put them on a table and then each person would have to choose which sandwich they thought was made for them and you know yeah. like, like there's not really a winner here we all just get to eat sandwiches but the idea is that like the the, the winning in this game is that you were able to make a sandwich that somebody saw and was like, yep, that's the sandwich for me. Um, and so it being like people who work in tech, we decided that we should overcomplicate this as far as humanly possible. Um, and what we did was, uh, let me switch over to the desktop view so we can look. Um, so this is Leslie on Twitter. You should go follow her. Um, and then- Oh, what- I don't, <laughs> oh, gosh. I do not. I. It- 
I have to, I have to warn you just in advance, you're going to see that I'm not super active on social channels. Uh, <laughs> and that is because, um, you probably don't believe this about me, but I'm actually very introverted. Like I'm extroverted with you guys because I, I love you all, but I'm introverted with the world, with uh, the world, with the world. <laughs> so, and I, I just, uh, so I'm just going to warn anybody who feels like following me, you're probably just going to see that I like a lot of stuff. So he's like, Leslie liked this. <laughs> Leslie liked that. <laughs> so I'm on there. I'm very active with like my participation. So a social in, lurker. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. I like to promote <laughs> things that, you know, that I agree with, but in terms of original content, I'm sort of stuck in that frozen thing where, um, I'm, I'm very like, every time I, you know, I post something out there, I think to myself, all right, who's going to come and like troll on this? Uh, because I, t I take mm. it very personally, which I know is like the number one rule not to do, but I feel like I just want to understand people. I have that empath sort of thing going yeah. on. I'm like, why? <laughs> and I think usually what it is, is it's a bot, <laughs> but it, I think uh, I can't think, help but sort of want di to di diagnose what the, yeah. the issue is. Yeah. So. Oh, um, do we have a echo you know, for I, some I reason? On feedback. We're getting an echo. Oh, is it me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it? Okay. Um, mine's on mute Why did it here. just start? Oh, no. Should I mute? We need to keep Zoom going, right? We do. Yeah, we have to keep Zoom going. Wait, we okay. seem okay now. Oh, okay. It was like it just it wigged out for it room. wigged out for like one second. Okay, I think we're fine. Oh, okay. Um, room. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so I, I I bring up the, the I brought up this Party Corgi website because um, the what you just mentioned about like wanting like not wanting to share because it's it's kind of like nerve wracking. I think that's a really really common feeling. Um, and like it's not the point of the show. I'm not like coaching or anything. I just wanted to say for anybody in the chat who feels the same way or anybody who's watching this later, um, the party Corgi network is, is a group full of people who range from, you know, people like, uh, like Chris and people like me who are, are pretty like brazen about just putting out whatever, um, to people who are just getting started, who are, are still looking for their first job, who are learning. Um, and it's a, it's a really, really supportive community. I've, I've absolutely loved it. And I feel like I, uh, Chris mentioned it in the chat, but there are party corgi tank tops that are shipping. You can buy them. Oh okay. my gosh, I love it. Look at all these rainbow corgis that are showing up in the. Oh, and there's a Jason one with a beard. So that that is the the, the corgi parade. That's not actually on the oh. website. That just happened on the stream. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's giving me such feels. Such feels. Uh, yeah, yeah, this. I mean, this is a this is a really wonderful. Um, it's a wonderful community, a wonderful website. The people the people here are, are really great. So. Um, that's a, a good have place. To, yeah, I'll have to get on that. I, uh, I I love sharing ideas and talking with people, but I feel like I hope this doesn't make me a chicken. I'm I just I want to put it out there right now that I might be a little bit of a chicken because I do know there is a certain amount of like all right, you just got to get over it and put stuff out there that you really want people to respond to. That is like the number one way of getting over your fear. But I'm always like, oh no, there's going to just be people in there who aren't really supposed to, you know, who aren't. Mm. I don't know. And then they're just going to be like, and then you're just kind of like, <laughs> no, oh. that's it. for real. Like that's, that's such a, that's such a, a valid fear. Um, um, and it's, but it, yeah. yeah, it's really common. Like, and I, uh, but anyway, so let's, let's, uh, let's do, let's focus on the secret sure. sandwich. Oh no, I did it. Um, I did it. Don't look at that. Don't look at that thing. I just did. I, I forgot. That's a bad sign now. Sorry. <laughs> Um, okay. So, so what we did is like, there's some history to this. This, this has been happening over a little while. Um, so the first thing that we did is Marissa Morby came on and, uh, we did a UX prototype for secret sandwich. We talked through all the workflows and that resulted in this, um, this whimsical prototype. So we worked through kind of who are the people using the app? What do we want them to be able to do the kind of the outcomes? Um, and then we turned that into a actual flow chart for different workflows. Um, so I think we started on, let's see, where was the homepage? The Secret Sandwich homepage, right? And yes. then from here, you're able to do things. You can, you know, sign in or sign up. Um, you, you create your event form, enter details, all those things. Um, and so that turned into a, like a pretty solid workflow of like what's going to happen in this app. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so this is uh, this is like really really useful. And from there, we had uh, Maggie Appleton on the show. Who Maggie mm-hmm. Appleton is this uh, this brilliant illustrator, uh, just creative thinker. Yeah. Um, really, really, really intelligent person who has done some amazing work. She does all the the illustrations for Egghead, and um, she's working with like Dan Abramov on on kind of illustrating JavaScript on uh, justjavascript.com. And she runs Illustrated.dev, which is a um, a really, really great site. It's just kind of like very good thinking through how to design. And then I'll I'll pull up Marissa's site too because she just redesigned it it's brilliant um, so this is marissa's site mm-hmm. uh with a lot of good articles on there um a lot in like ux research and things like that and so from the the whimsical flowchart, we created a let me get back here this is a like a really lo-fi prototype right like you get to the website yeah. you're going to see some stuff and then you're going to be able to click this create button you're going to log in um mm-hmm. it's going to have you fill out details you create the event and then i think you end up over Oh, this is like the the two. Yeah, the the hover. The yeah, hover the hover thing. state. Right. Hover action. Yes. I think we were playing with Figma prototypes. Is how we got to the, yeah, the hover I state. Love, I, love <laughs> I, I I hate gushing about services, but Figma really is one of them that I I really do I really enjoy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this is this is all the the really good stuff. Um, awesome. so so anyway, so we took all that, and then Maggie sent me um the secret sandwich. Uh, designs, which I need to find. Actually, if you want me to share my Figma collaborative space right now, I have it all in there. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay? Let's do that. Okay. So I'm not sure. So I'm going to share it with you. Can I just share it with your um, email then? Yeah. Um, okay. If you want to. Is it, uh, sorry, Jason at. Um, Langsdorf.com. Langs- at Langsdorf.com. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I was looking for it and I. <laughs> All right, All right, I'm going to give you editing permission and okay. send this to you right now. Send invite. Okay, there you go. So you should get that and you can kind of see what I brought up, which is very, very, very basic right now. Um, so let's see okay. if that works. So I have this link. I'm going to paste it in here. Works. I am signed in. Perfect. Okay. There you so are. I see your little are. Brain. Yeah, hi. Um, so this is the amazing logo that Maggie did. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I love it. It's uh, very, it's very, super fun. Yeah. Um, you know, just like what a blast, right? And yeah, uh, I, she gave us some color options. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I I absolutely adore it. I I think I I, I actually used to watch Secret Squirrel, um, I, which I like kind of reminds me i don't know if that's exactly what it was based we, on we legit talked about super secret secret scroll when we were when we were show. doing I, this i was i love that show i used to watch all those like hanna barbera uh like cartoons and secret Squirrel was definitely one of my favorite ones so um when i saw this i just was like oh i immediately yeah it. yeah it's like it's very like it makes me super happy um yeah, so great. yeah so what i think we can do is i'm i am now observing you and okay. i think so at this point we've got like a lot of uh, UX research that tells us kind of what people are going to do with the app, what our expected outcomes are. We've got yeah. this amazing branding material from from Maggie. Um, so, what should we do next? Like, if you were gonna, if you got this, this was the pile of resources that you received, yeah. and somebody said, "Make me a, an app." <laughs> um, kind of what what would be your your okay. first step? So, I just want to um, say. As a, as a disclaimer, and this is going to sound like a cop out, so I apologize, but um, obviously, you know, with designing things visually, um, there is a lot of just experimentation that looks like nothing for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as you kind of just like, you know, let your, oh gosh, this sounds so, it's, this sounds so fluffy. It sounds so like frou-frou, but like, um, I, woo-woo, you know, but I, woo-woo. Uh, woo-woo. And I think honestly, like, I just want to make a comment about that. Just like, I think there's a little bit of, tell me if I'm wrong, because I don't know if this is accurate, but like, you know, there's the dev, there's dev community and there's design community. And Mm -hmm. I think sometimes, and this does not happen all the time by any means, but like, you know, there can be a little bit of just friction just because like, you know, they're doing two processes that need to work in tandem. And I think mm. the more they talk, the better it usually is. Um, but when when they remain siloed, sometimes it's like, oh, why did you do it this way? Because now you know, I have to fix 
fix it or whatever and like or vice versa like oh you're telling me you can't make it happen visually that way well why and just like that communication sort of breaks down a little bit we just and, had a like just oh, such a good episode with Dan Mall oh, where amazing. we talked a ton oh, about this. I, I meant to watch this one. I'll have to watch it after this. Yeah, Dan, and, and like a lot of what we talked about was this. It's like when designers yeah. and developers are, are working on things like, you know, you're building software together. Yeah, and the, the idea is like, how do you find ways to collaborate so that you don't feel like you're throwing things over the wall or exactly. things like that? Exactly. Because I mean, we really have the same goals. It's just that the processes are just a little, you know, like, Oh, Hey, the, look, Marissa's the, here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But design systems or something, actually, I've been working um, with a client called a knapsack um, to work on the visual design of their website. And knapsack is a, uh, another design system, like, service online mm. that you can use and um i as i've been learning more about design systems and like how functional they are in terms of like bridging that gap between different you know m stakeholders on teams um it's been it's been really great to learn that I, I feel like i'm just always learning and and trying to remain you know on top you know just always always in pursuit of 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 trying to learn more about what's going on in the landscape today. Yeah, I think uh, that's so, in that's the that's the best you can do, right? Is like always yeah, try to just, be. Yeah, just always chasing. Everybody always is smarter than me, but I'm, I'm I feel like in my pursuit of trying to chase them down, like that's like mm -hmm. the best way that I can find success because I'll never be an expert at everything. So at least I can attempt to. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so we've got um, so we've got like the the basics here, right? We've got uh, we've got some wireframes, we've got some some really good branding, um, and at, at this point, like I agree with you, a lot of times what what I'll end up doing at this point is what probably looks like a whole lot of screwing around, um, where I'm like, what if I put this color on this color, or what if I drew a box like this? <laughs> and um, but but I think that's actually. To me, especially in modern web design, that's that's such a big part of it because so much of web design right. is. Oh <laughs> uh, God, she's getting so big. Okay, anyway, sorry. No, I... <laughs> sorry, I know. Just, um, she's actually working on um, some stuff for me in the background here. So. I know she's running the stream, right? Like, <laughs> she's, yeah, this is actually like this is the brains of the operation right here. So. Um, she, she's yeah, operating so. Figma right now. We're just standing yeah, here. And exactly, talking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um actually this is my brain trust right here i'm not actually doing anything i'm a puppet to her whims um so in terms of getting started with this um i guess what uh we would start with is um probably just the mobile um layout and mm -hmm. then uh for responsiveness we can do the uh we can do the desktop just based on where the mobile ends up yeah so we have the wireframes in here and um so I guess, can you just, okay, I know that you did this already with Marissa, but just as like a refresher, can you run me through a little bit? So the flow here that we're working on is um, when people land on this page, basically mm -hmm. what they're going to be seeing is uh, an image of some kind, maybe of a, of a sandwich or uh, uh, maybe the, the logo or something mm -hmm. kind of title. And the intent here is that we want to have I guess the audience here, the, the person, the user here is, is the host really of, uh, of this well, entire event who's going to be creating. So we've got two, we've got two kind of flows. I believe the homepage is mostly for hosts because okay. I, I think the way we talked about this is that a host would get a, like an event page that they would send to the guests. So that's going to be like a separate homepage for people who would be participating. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think this, this homepage is like, I want you to create your own secret sandwich event is, is I believe the stated goal of, of this page. Okay. So are we creating the journey for the host then, um, in terms of the visual design or are we creating um, the, the page that, um, use that people who were, um, so let's say the event already existed and was, was created. Um, are we creating the page essentially that would operate as like the, the event homepage where people could um, text to upload, like uh, submit their forms with their information. And yeah. Like, and or, let's, um, let's assume that we're going to start with the, like create, uh, like create an event, like the host homepage. Mm -hmm. And then if we have time, we can, we can move on to other pages, but just given the, given the time constraints, I would say, let's start with one and, and we'll see how far we get. 
Yeah, because uh, I was trying to, I was thinking to myself before we started, I was like, huh, there's kind of two journeys that are running on this and they yeah. have different goals. Um, mm-hmm. So they have a di- would have probably different needs that they had on the homepage, but, um, or maybe what we could just do, this is so boring though, I don't know, but you can tell me, like we could create kind of a homepage and just have basically like, you could choose a path if you were somebody who was the host who wanted to create an event, if you wanted to just have a single homepage for everybody. Yeah, uh, I, I think. Say, hey, I'm here as a uh, as a registrant, or I'm here as a participant. Follow this path, essentially, and then you have yeah. a leads to their journey. Or we can have some, and then basically, as the host, say host to create who leads them into the journey to create an event. So it's basically feel, a gatekeeping kind of, you know, yeah, a landing page where you then recognize like the type of user that you are and make your choice. Yeah. So my thought, like when, when I've thought about this, my, my like analogous website would be meetup. So mm-hmm. the, like when I'm going to attend a meetup, I never go to meetup.com. I always go to like meetup.com slash Portland, you know, Portland react meetup slash meetup ID. And then I'm going to RSVP there and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I think, I think it might be, it might be wise just from a, like let's separate our concerns Mm -hmm. to say that the the idea for secret sandwich is that you would either need to know the link for your event because we don't want like this isn't a thing where we want discovery we don't want strangers to join your sandwich party um that's it's it's very much like a an invite based thing so i i think we would want um the home page to be for creating events and then you would get a separate a separate experience like a separate page that would Mm -hmm. be you have been invited to event here's how to participate Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So we're just going to make that assumption then that basically uh, people that are going to be landing on the page we're going to be creating right now already have a the URL essentially of, of the event that they want to um, participate in. That's yeah. Kind of what- yeah. So do you want to do the you want to do like the event page like this this is a secret sandwich mm-hmm. event. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, sorry. Let me just uh, look at. Um, um, trying to see the, uh, all right, sorry, I'm distracted, I'm distracted. Um, all right, so getting started here, um, event page here. Oh my goodness, okay. Um, okay, sorry, let me, let me collect some. So I guess what we need to start with is the title, right? So the title of the event is, um, is, is Secret Sandwich or, or, yeah, so the app would be Secret Sandwich, and the title of the event would be like, you know, Secret Sandwich, uh, or like Leslie and Matt's house, or like you know uh, something something so like that, event. right? Like your event, uh, event or or Secret Sandwich. Mm-hmm. All right. So I see that we're using Marker Felt. That's cool. Is that the is that the font? So yeah. Mark- no, I, think, I mean, I think it's what you chose as a uh, as a thing that you hate, so that we would know that it was um, a placeholder text. Yeah, whenever uh, whenever we do mockups, like one of the things that Marissa mentioned is like it's important to not let people fixate on design details because the the wireframe yeah. is there to get people to think about the flow, not the design. Exactly. Which is why those those prototypes are like ultra lo-fi. They're very deliberately like this is a box. There are no colors. It's you know stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, cool. So um, I guess uh, the relevant, de- we'll just get the relevant details on here and then we can start kind of like playing around with like how they look. Um, so the font that I see that Maggie has chosen is called Co- Copal Standard. Okay. Um, we don't necessarily need to use that one for, um, you know, for our title, but I can throw it on there just for fun right now and just see how it looks. It's a little fat. Um, it's, it's, it's Maybe, maybe we don't use it. Maybe we find something complimentary, like um, Roboto is popular. Everybody loves Roboto right now. Um, we can just use that. And okay. uh, you see the, how the process is just so... Yeah, no, th- but this is, this is perfect. Like, <laughs> is so uh, scientific here. Uh, Marissa oh, has, a, has a question. How do, you, how do you pick good fonts? Um, 
to be totally honest with you, uh, I usually will, um, you know, take what I want to, uh, so like, let's say this is our title, um, which we just will make the assumption that it is for now. Um, I like to uh, drag it out a couple times and um, I actually use a couple of websites that I can, um, I'm actually not a member of Twitch. I forgot to sign up before we did this, so I'm a little embarrassed because I can't even respond to the messages, but um, one of the sites I use is called Type Wolf. Oh, yeah. I know Type Wolf. Yeah, Type yeah. Wolf, um, and that has a lot of great um, resources on you know finding um, free fonts, so like Google Fonts. If you have a um, if you have an Adobe membership, an Adobe ID, you can use all of Adobe's Typekit fonts. Um, they have lookbooks. Um, another uh, site that I use frequently is Fonts in Use, which is literally like you can see. Um, let's see, actually, that's not fonts. I can't spell. In yeah, fontsanduse.com. Dot com, um, and you can basically see how people have have used fonts in many, many different formats, different, mm -hmm. um, you know, executions. So web, um, print, uh, interactive, mobile, any and any kind of. This is cool them. too because yeah. you can go in and say like, okay, I want to see how people use Futura. Yes. And yes, then exactly. it'll show you like all these different uses. Mm -hmm. of Futura. So here's a combination of like Futura and Baskerville. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. And here's, it's, you know, it's like, a great resource. I use this all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really great to just like see how people have done like non-traditional pairings of, uh, of typefaces and like the exact use case of that typeface. And, mm -hmm. you know, it really just depends on like where you're at, like um, fonts that I would choose to look at in say an environment, like if you're in a museum and you're using wayfinding, um, that totally is a totally different use case than you would on the web. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all about like, how far am I from like what I'm actually looking at? And uh, you know, what are the relevant, like how much time am I going to be spending looking at it? Like, are my eyes going to get fatigued? Blah, blah, yeah. blah. So um, there's so many typography, people who do typography, that is an entirely different, like uh, constant, you know, you know, set of skills that people are experts in that mm -hmm. um, I cannot myself say, I, I do know a man in Portland. Um, his name is um, Thomas. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his last name. Uh, Thomas. Um, I, I, oh gosh. See, I'm not, I'm no good on the, on the run. <laughs> it's okay. While you're uh, thinking I'll, of I'll that. I'll think of it. I'll think of it and then I'll get back to you. Um, but he, he and I work together actually at Widen and Kennedy and he oh, cool. is, um, he's incredibly talented and he literally just does a lot of, a lot of font uh, type design, the typography design. Um, as soon as I think of it, which it'll happen at some point during our, our stream. You'll um, just I'll, yell I'll it. Let you know what it yeah. Is. yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly like, oh gosh. Um, another, anyway. another cool thing on this type wolf site that I think is worth calling out is like a lot of times people will, will say like, Oh, everybody uses Helvetica. It's so boring. And so this site has a list of alternatives, like what's, what fonts you could use instead of Helvetica that are still pretty similar that have like the same feel, um, which yeah. I think is such a, that's also just such a good idea that you can just go in and, and dig through that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so anyways, it, yeah. oh, and like, here's another like, yeah, it's, it's look such book. a great resource. And I mean, like, this is just like, you know, um, like developers are always like Googling and, you know, if there's something that you don't know, a lot of this kind of stuff kind of happens on the fly is you're like, Hey, you know, I really need to be inspired by something. I need to see like what other people have done before me. And that way, that's how I learn. And that's how I become better, you know, mm -hmm. with each time that I'm doing something. I just remember the guy's name, his name is Thomas Bradley. Uh, he's very talented. And if you want to see somebody in Portland who does just beautiful typography design, he is, um, he is that person. So, uh, yeah, feel free to, there he is at the top. Yeah. He's, um, he just does a lot of like hand done typography and that does not look like his website. Am but I yeah, in the wrong place? Do, yeah. He does a lot of like, just really interesting typography. He did the, um, dig a pony type. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Digapony is, yeah, he did Dig a pony is a um, he did, it's a website um, or a, a Portland bar. Yeah. Dig a pony. He did their, uh, their logo. Um, yeah, he did that there. Um, he, he's really talented. So, um, somebody who just really is like a type nerd, type mm -hmm. nerd, that guy. Um, anyway, uh, in terms of like how I kind of work though, like usually what I'll do is, um, I'll just drag out a few of these and um, just start playing with the uh, typography. Um, I'll I'll often go to Google. So Google Fonts is another um, is another mm -hmm. website that I'll go to to just see kind of like type um, 
you know, type what I want to put in there and then see a lot of them comparatively. So if I want to say, I, I want this to be probably a serif or a sans serif um, font, I can put Leslie and Matt's secret sandwich and I'm, I'm sorry, you can't see it on mine, but um, you know, you just go to Google fonts, uh, yeah. put it in the type thing and you can kind of see, uh, you know, what you like. And uh, you know, the Roboto is one, uh, Open Sans is another one. Um, all, all of those kind of show up and you kind of just see them like one-on-one. -on -one. I'll do them in here so that way you yeah. can kind of yeah, so there's well, and, then, and something that's cool about Figma too is it, it actually integrates with Google Fonts. So there's a setting yeah, on your I, preferences. I know. I love it so much. I and really so do. I, yeah, you don't I have don't to download, download them, which is so nice. Yeah, it's really, it's just nice that they made it work so quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Poppins is another one that I see frequently kind of show up. Yeah. Um, so like, let's see, here's like, yeah. So and I just kind of sometimes like to just, I like to just see how things kind of look like side by side and see like what I honestly gravitate to. And, mm -hmm. you know, their design, visual design is so subjective. Like what I kind of like and what appeals to me is going to be different for everybody else. But I think just the goal is with a visual design sort of first pass is creating something for other people to sort of react to. Um, mm -hmm. I think of it a lot of it that way. I, it's probably, I don't know if this is like orthodox to say like what you're creating is always like a first draft, but I do think that like, you know, things can always be built upon and eventually, you know, you do kind of land on the best execution of it. But the yeah. first half is always, a, I just treat it not very preciously. It's just like, all right, this is just something really for the client to sort of respond to. And this is really what I felt was right at the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, collaboratively you kind of, I mean, sometimes people love what you did immediately and then you're like, wow, I actually nailed it the first time. But sometimes, you know, there's some collaborative sort of back and forth and that's mm -hmm. totally fine too. I'm, I'm open to people's um, feedback all the time. So. Yeah. And I've um, always kind of found that to be a really, uh, like a really interesting conversation too, because a lot of times it's not like, I hate this font. I want you to use a different font. It's like, I, this feels very corporate or this doesn't feel serious enough, or, you know, this doesn't feel the way that I want my business to feel, which makes it such a fascinating conversation to have because yeah. you're not, you're not talking about design anymore. You're talking about like the layer of like design is a layer of abstraction over identity. Right. And that's mm -hmm. such an interesting thing because now you're almost in a role of like, I'm your, um, you, uh, like I'm your, your almost like a psychiatrist like i'm trying to pull out who you think you are yeah. so that i can make the thing look like you feel you look to the world like if somebody yeah. were to say ah if, if you were a website you would look like this and i yeah, love that it, it's such a cool project yeah it's really um and i think that's part of the reason why it's i don't know like design is such a strange uh field it's it's very much like what you're describing and it feels that way like where you're really trying to really like be empathetic to your users right you're trying to understand through your own i mean but obviously everyone's biased i mm -hmm. can only work through the lens of of my own brain my own eyes and um you know collecting as much data as i can about you know like doing what marissa does which is you know really trying to understand like who your users are what their motivations are what they respond to and um, trying to, you know, bring that to life visually is really my job. So it's, mm -hmm. um, it's very much an, an exercise in psychology. And, uh, it, you know, I don't always uh, get things right because just people themselves individually are so nuanced and complex. It's, mm -hmm. um, you're, ever, you're never going to hit everybody on the head, but, um, you know, when you do, uh, people definitely respond to it. It's, it's that whole, like, goofy, you know, colloquialism where you say, uh, you know, everybody notices bad design because it right. doesn't you – know, everybody notices bad design, but no one – but if, if it's well-designed, um, it's almost invisible. Like, mm -hmm. it just works. It's just – so uh, it just – yeah, that's kind of – what I think about. So it's really my goal if, if the site just does what I intend it to. And if people happen to like the way it looks visually, like that's an added bonus to me. Yeah. So I, I just did nice something looking. that, that usually yeah, helps me you. think about. Working. I love it. Um, so um, what, what I like to do is like, if we know that this is the branding, right? Like this is our, our font, then mm -hmm. we've got all these ideas for what the font could look like. And then mm -hmm. we can just start to pull them up kind of yeah. one by one and say like, yeah. what do we think about this? Do we like this? Pairing. Yeah, and does like, it? Yes, exactly, exactly. And, you know, we're using a sans serif here, so maybe maybe a serif one would be nice, or for we sure. could use a serif for body. Like it's there's really like 
Somebody actually posted a question that I wanted to uh, respond oh, yeah, to. Yeah. I'm, sorry. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not able to actually message people, but I can talk. Um, best practices for using serif versus um, sans serif in certain elements. Um, I would say that there's not really like any strict set of rules. Um, and that's why visual design is just so um, hard to articulate really. Cause like, it's really about like, it's, it's so much tied in with like feeling and how something feels to you. You know, when something's wrong and you know, when something's working and mm -hmm. really just experimenting like we're doing right now and looking at things all the time is collecting, you know, visual data essentially. And, um, you know, with that data that you sort of collect visually as a person, you know, as a designer, you're able to make decisions about, you know, what is working and what's not working. And then you just move forward with those decisions. And then eventually, um, you know, you have your, your client or whoever the end user is respond and provide feedback to that. So mm -hmm. it's almost like a, it's just an experiment where we're doing design science. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I would say best practices, usually, um, I, the best practice I, I can say for that is just to play like we're doing right now. Mm. There's just a lot of playing, a lot of experimenting. Um, there's no wrong answer to, you know, serif and serif, serif and pairing with a sans serif and sans serif with sans serif. Um, and you can see this like on a lot of, you know, Google fonts. There's a lot of like type wolf is a great resource that we had spoken about. You can see that people have done really like every combination that you can think of. It just really depends on the you know use case that you're using it in. What is what is that final medium, um, and whether or not and just ex experiencing it live and responding. So, mm -hmm. um, I think for this, um, yeah. So this is a pretty fat and and com and kind of comical looking uh, font, mm -hmm. and. Um, complimenting that I don't I'm almost wondering maybe if it needs to be a little lighter to just sort of balance that weight so we're yeah. using auto black so let's just see what like you know it looks like with regular or thin or something like that just in comparison so like let's I guess for for playing around let's uh, move this down this is our menu bar at the top but let's just uh, move this in here somewhere so um yeah and I'm actually going to take this menu bar and I'm going to just change it to white so that we can't see it. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn on the, uh, I just turned on the, um, I can't talk, the uh, rulers at the top. Okay. And I'm just going to drag a ruler here at the bottom. Um, let, me, let me just see what this is. This is a height of 84 pixels. Um, I'm just going to change it to 70 for fun. Okay. And then I'm gonna drag this up to the bottom. Is this not snap? Hmm. Maybe the guys it's, don't snap. It's snappy there. enough, it looks like I think it. it's snappy enough. It snaps for our purposes here. So, okay, so now I have a rough idea about like where my header is and we can use, we can make this decision later. Um, I'm sure there'll be menu items. Actually, I'm gonna shrink this just a smidgy. Um, do you, do we have a, um, Actually, you know what? I no, I'm just. I told you this is like a not a totally not. I just said it was scientific, but it's actually non-scientific. <laughs> it's, Creative it's, chaos. It's, it's chaos. It's it's chaos. So you know, just like a bunch of stuff and whatever. So, um, but we do know that our logo needs to be kind of near the top. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the the logo together. I I want it to be readable. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Um, and then the next thing that we want to see is the title of our event. And then I'm guessing other relevant information to have and uh, stop me and interrupt me at any time is probably the date. So let's just put a dummy date in there. Mm -hmm. um, let's just say it's September because I have no idea like when, uh, when this is actually going to happen. But um, who, who knows, really? And we'll make this thin light and... Um, well, also we'll make this light just for fun, and or maybe this is like I said, th there's no process to this. Um, and I'll make this small, smaller, and mm -hmm. maybe it goes. Um, let's just, just shrink this up. Maybe this goes up here. Oh, there you so, go. So okay, we know now we've got name. information higher. Yeah, up. we're starting to get some information on there. So all right, we have our um, maybe maybe this is a little bit more bold because it's smaller. Um, Twenty four. It's 24 point. That's pretty big. Maybe we make it 18. Um, 
So let's get our pertinent information. Okay, so it's we now know the title. Of, we know the date and the title of our event. And um, I guess if this is uh, something about Leslie and Matt, we could put. I'm trying to think if we should put a picture of Leslie and Matt in there, but I don't know. That seems that seems vain. So I, <laughs> we should just maybe put a picture of a sandwich. I'll find a picture of a sandwich. Fancy a fancy sandwich. I think that could work. I don't even know. I don't even know. Or maybe, you know what, maybe we don't even, even need an image. Maybe we, we just put the details on it. So. Oh, um, wait, I've got it. Oh, did you, do you, do you have something for me? Okay. I do. Let me, let me drop it in. Great. I hope you found the same one that I just found. Oh, what? I is... guarantee I did not. Oh, no. <laughs> Who are those people? <laughs> oh, wow. This where is, you, uh, where are this your is. Friends? One of my favorite photos. This is from a, a party that we wow. had at uh, Joel Hooks and his wife Christina's house, where Beautiful. we we like dressed up. And uh, Christina is an excellent photographer, so she'd set up like a photo booth and everything. Um, she really is. <laughs> it's so good. Anyways, yeah, this this can be our photo. I think this. Yeah, is, this is right. Um, this feels right. I don't even know. I'm gonna steal some uh, lorem ipsum because I'm not even sure really like what to. I, I might have some dummy text in here just for fun. Mm -hmm. uh, cause I'm not even really sure like how much dummy text we're going to need, but I'm just going to throw this in here cause, um, you never know when you need dummy text. So I'm just going to pull this to the side and then we can style it the way we want. So that's obviously way too big. So let's change this to 18 and, uh, just have it be, um, left aligned, left justified. Okay. Um, this image is uh, is quite large. I'm trying to think about what other. Um, that's so goofy. Oh, <laughs> so goofy. So yeah, like you can see, um, there's really um, not really any uh, science to all of this. Like we just we're just gonna try and throw the relevant elements onto this page, figure mm -hmm. out like what we're working with, and then find the optimal way to sort of arrange them so that people can understand what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we can think about like what information needs to be available to somebody when they come in here. Right. So totally. like the, the things that I'm thinking is we need the date, we need the title. That's we awesome. Need a date. Um, um, we can talk about who's hosting, even though it's probably obvious because of this, but, um, and like, maybe and like who's attending. Maybe, yeah. So we could say hosted by or att attending. Um, mm -hmm. and so this would probably be like a single person would be like the owner of the event. Yeah. So wait, do you want to say like event owner? Well, I mean, I, I could be hosted by, but I think it would be like it, there, there'd be like a user in the system who's going to ultimately be the one who created the event. Yes. Yes. And then I think it would be, I think it's good to have this information because let's say somebody wants to contact that person about right. details on the event that aren't maybe on this page or mm -hmm. message them about something, you know, that, that this would be a method of that they could do that. So um, let's just go back down to our kind of, um, it looks like right now we're kind of using 18 point for our body, but again, like this can change. Um, another thing that we can create, we can do in Figma is I can create, um, type styles. So if I want to continue to use 18 point for my body, I can create a type style by going over here to these little dots. See how I create a style. So I'm going to add the style and just say body, and we can always rename this later. Um, so now this is something that I can apply to anything. And so like when if we I click over it, here. Yeah. So I if I want to click over here, yep, there you go. Got so it. it already has that style applied to it. So I love styles. They make everything work so much faster. And when I'm making changes to things later, it really is, is nice to be able to change everything that has that style applied. Mm -hmm. I think so this, this, I think this, this idea of like, um, so we've got a couple things that we can notice uh, on my screen. You can see right now we've got local styles and these are like text styles. We've got our body style, color styles. We've got the dark, the teal and the tomato, which how great is it that the tomato totally matches the um, the red in this photo? I, I uh, know that. But so what it, doing this gives us the ability to it's like setting variables in your in your code. Because mm -hmm. what we're what we're now able to do is like if I want to go in and and change this, like let's say I want to change this teal and I'm going to make sure that I don't lose the the value on it. But if I wanted to change this, I could make it, let's say this like, you know, darker color. Or I could I could switch it over to be like an orange. We can see that it's changing in everywhere that it's been used. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, exactly. And so that gives us a ton of power to say like, oh, this is our brand color. And then everywhere that we want to use that color, we, we, cho we choose the brand style and a rebrand later will update literally everything. Um, yeah. And so that's a really nice way to work so that you're not, you know, doing that thing where you're like, well, did we change this one? Did we change that one? And if you go yeah. look at a lot of websites, you'll find 15 shades of very similar gray because people just kind of like chose what looked right and didn't use like a brand style guide. Um, mm -hmm. So this is this is the, the early beginnings of a brand style guide is setting these types yeah, of styles. Definitely. So and yeah, these brand style guides can be translated into design systems. So like when this is going to be something that's built for mm -hmm. um, and I guess Figma sort of acts as a design system kind of in its own way where I'm creating really styles does, yeah. up here and then I can basically like link to these. I can provide this file over to a developer who then takes all these and is able to sort of apply what they need to when they're building it. So I'm creating assets and creating components, all those kinds of things within this canvas. That's why Figma is, is great because it's just, yeah. it's kind of a lot of, it's, you know, it's the, the, the design tool, the interface and the, you know, design system kind of rolled into one. And mm -hmm. basically the developer just needs to take it in. I mean, I'm assuming how this works. I'm not a developer myself. Well, and I, like I just pulled up a, a section of the of the Figma UI. There's a, a code tab where it's literally got like, it's got some stuff we don't need. Like it absolutely positions things, which, you know, we're not going to do that because we want responsive yeah. designs. But it gives us our colors. It gives us our like all of our font settings and weights um, so that we're able to just like drop this right in. It's really, Definitely. really nice. It's great. It's great. I I hate to gush, but over tools, but uh, I do really like it a lot. It's so. it's a great tool. Um, I, great I, tool. I think that Figma is one of those things that like it, at first it feels like it's the same as everything else you've ever used. And as you as you start to get into it and you realize all the little rough patches that it's helped paper over um, or not paper over, but like actually solve, you know, this mm -hmm. the, like the fact that right now you're not you're not talking to me. You don't have to come over and point at my screen. We are, we are literally looking at what you're doing. You don't have to explain yeah. it. You're able to say, what if it's like this? Yeah, um, I, I guess. Yeah. Sorry. I guess I'm just moving on without really narrating much, but I'm getting inspired as we're talking and I'm just throwing them in there. But um, definitely, you know, I think uh, that, you know, it's hosted, you know, I think providing information. And again, like this is, we're still in the process right now. And I realize this is not as quick as doing wireframes, but I guess that's why you do wireframes, right? Because it's like, Hey, this is a rough idea of like mm -hmm. what I want to see on here. And then in terms of like how it looks, um, you know, that, that takes a little bit longer, but the wireframes certainly like expedite that process so much. Um, so yeah, I, you know, other relevant information is probably, um, you know, what time, the time of the event, so mm -hmm. maybe like what time, you know, or it starts at, you know, I don't know. I don't know the right lingo. I'm not a copywriter either. I just want to apologize. Mm -hmm. Seven or let's say 5 p.m. Let's make this in a normal. And maybe this isn't the right place, but it starts at five. And um, maybe it'd be nice to have um, an add to the calendar event or a button or something like that. So I could you know, have this, uh, yeah, that would be, that would be calendar. good. Yeah. And, um, so it starts at five and I don't know if we, I guess we could have an end date here. Do already we're getting maybe needing to um, adjust this style a little bit to uh, Yeah, to well, and I'm, I'm wondering too, if like maybe, maybe the workflow should be that like the app automatically sends you a calendar invite, like we'll just add you okay. to the event. Yeah. Um, so, cause, I, yeah, cause I'm thinking like as a, if I was gonna throw a party and I was gonna invite a bunch of people, I would probably create one invite and add everybody to it instead mm -hmm. of everybody managing their own invite. Yeah, definitely. Um, because that also allows us to do things like if we change details, we can centrally update it. So that maybe we don't need the add to calendar button and that'll buy us back some some real estate. Mm -hmm. Yes, these are all things that uh, definitely are super, uh, you know, great for um, conserving real estate. Real estate in terms of, uh, you know, design is always like something that we're like, how can we really <laughs> conserve mm -hmm. this? Um, okay, so I'm just going to play some dummy text in here for now. 
we'll do it, we'll stop there. And I'm thinking, I'm wondering if this is, this might be a little big, maybe. So maybe we adjust this, adjust this a little bit. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna adjust body and maybe we change it to, and you see how I'm now adjusting this type style and it's adjusting everything that it's been applied to. So this is now 16 points. Oh, cool. Yeah. Has, see, there we go. Already, yeah. already see, getting value go. out of that with like one screen. Yeah, already. I'm already getting value out of it. So I, it's great. I love styles. So um, um, let's make this one also 16. So now all of so those gonna, with that, have, yeah. I'm going to over here just add a, a quick, um, oh, geez, it's so big. I wanted oh. to add a, uh, a thumbnail oh. for like somebody who's coming, right? She, yes, yes, yes. I will, um, yes, so add it first. Perfect, perfect. That, I'm going to make it, what do you think? Should we go circular? I love it. Circles, circles are perfect. Okay, so I'm going to make a like 30 pixel thing, and then we're going to group these. I'm going to hit the mask button here. Cool. Every single time I do that backwards on the first try. All right, so change the uh -huh. order. Go, mask it. Okay. So now I can reposition this. Beautiful. And we end up with a good avatar. Oops. Okay, so there's there's our avatar. And I can I just duplicate this? I did. All right, so we'll call this avatar, and then I can move this over so that it's usable. And then if I like pull another one over, I can get like another person. Let's grab a picture of Matt. Okay, and then I will drag this photo in. How big is it? Way too big. Oh God, it's so, it's huge. All right, here we go. Make this smaller. There's his face. Cool. I love it. That's beautiful. All I right. love seeing that kind of stuff. Should we, um, I guess we can do, you know, a thing for attendees. And um, we could show like how many people in the title are attending. Is this something that would be? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. And then I was also thinking it could be kind of fun um, if we did like, so we've got our avatars here. And mm -hmm. like, if somebody has entered their details, what if we were to take, let's see if I can do this. I want to take the, the mask. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And I want to put it on their faces. <laughs> That's cute. Yes. Oh, so like when they're attending, the mask goes on. Like once they've entered their details. Oh, great. So then we can put the mask. Oh, that's funny. I love it. Oh, I love that so much. That's fantastic. And I think I can, I should be able to do this. I might have to get, um, Gant Laborde back on the show, but we can do, um, we can use AI for this to like yeah, put these on once somebody's amazing. added their details. Yeah, I love it. That looks, that's close enough. All right, so we'll I say that it. Matt has entered his details and Marissa has not. I'm gonna remove this. Uh, let's not do that. Let's make it smaller though. So I guess my question though is like, are we making the assumption that, um, uh, that um, people are are that are that have the URL for this are going to be coming, or is it just like a difference of them saying yes, I'm coming, and then entering details later in order so to gain mask? There, there are going to be like two stages, right? Because the the first stage is like you get an invite and you're going to go and basically like accept the invite. Yes, I'm coming. But then mm -hmm. the second part is that you have to go and do. Um, you have to answer some questions because like part of the game okay. is that you're going to answer. Marissa came up with some really funny questions. I'm going to see if I can find them. Um, where did these get written down? <laughs> I think they might be in a different document, but they were like questions like, you know, if, if you, if you could be described by a, like a cold cut, 
which cold oh, cut boy. best describes you and why like kind of fun fun ideas to like get you get us to laugh or like ask questions about like movies or or you know just anything that that starts to give you a picture of who somebody is totally. um which is just you know mostly to be silly uh because uh, after all this is just a it's a silly game um but you know partially to like help the person who draws your name out of a hat have some information to go on so that they can you know put together something that that has maybe clues in it maybe uh the logo was designed by Maggie Appleton, and I believe the way that she works is she starts in a sketching tool like Procreate on the iPad. Once she has done a sketch, she will uh, move over into Illustrator to clean it up and vectorize. And then I think after she does Illustrator, a lot of times she'll take that into Photoshop for like final touch-ups, but I believe in this case, the vector was done in Illustrator. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. She has uh, an opinion. <laughs> she uh, she doesn't like doesn't like the mask on dad. Uh, she loves this photo. Actually, we have some of these photos on our fridge, and every time we walk by the fridge, she's like, "Daddy, mommy." So, <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, she's a big fan of of that photo. So, um, just uh, gonna try this like a little smaller to see. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out. I'm just so playing around. See. I'm honestly just playing around. Um, so. No, no, I think this is um, good. Like, but like, okay, so let's just pause for a second and look what we've yeah. done. So yeah. here in about 30 minutes since we started designing the screen, we've been able to go from a blank canvas to something that like, if you sent me a link to this app, I wouldn't think this was not finished. Like this looks complete. This is good enough yeah. that we could ship it now and it would yep. be usable. It's our MVP, if you will. Yes. So, uh, you know, oh, and this here we is go. basically like where I get, this is honestly like, you know, not, not that I've stopped here, um, but you can stop, I mean, again, uh, you know, you're much better about uh, the time, the time running on these things, but um, we can honestly move on to another page at this point um, because we have kind of a lot of the information that we need for this page. And this is, you know, an MVP basically, um, or we could keep kind of, you know, tweaking it, you know, massaging it, kind of seeing, uh, seeing if something better kind of happens. Cause at this point I'd just be, you know, and this is kind of where, <laughs> you know, I just be dragging things around and being like, do I like the way it looks here better? Like, mm. would it be better if this was up here and the photo was above, like, you know, at this point, like, should we do this? Like, yeah. so, you know, this is kind of the point where it's like, we have a lot of the elements that are relevant to, to accomplish what we what we need this to communicate on here and then you know we can either kind of massage it and play with it to see if something looks better or mm -hmm. we can move on with our lives to the next thing uh let's see um, so i mean we've got we've got about 20 25 minutes or so that we we can use so okay. at this point we could i mean maybe we play with the home page sure. um yeah so the we the can, home page uh, is more yeah, of I like already, a, i already brought it over here so we can um so i just made this your basic uh you know top this is a 14 oh you know what 40 what the, so maybe this is a better idea how would we yeah. convert this mobile view into the full the full screen view so yeah, instead of doing good. a home page what if we did this page yeah at like that's a, kind of what i was thinking maybe oh like, okay perfect so i, I was thing. i was yeah. not yep. thinking the same thing <laughs> oh sorry. yeah no we're so this is you know what you're describing is responsive design which i'm sure everybody's heard it's, it's a term that's thrown around a lot right now but basically you know you always we usually design mobile first and uh -huh. uh, after that you know you got to capture everybody who stumbles onto your website on their laptop uh, or whatever their computer so um yeah what does this essentially information look like on a different canvas and mm -hmm. um you know back to the designer type of thing is like all right we know the elements that we want to have um we now have a bigger canvas, we have more real estate to work with. So what's the most, you know, aesthetically pleasing way of having those be presented um, in this format? Right. Um, so again, we can use um, the same, uh, you know, all right, so this is at 70. We can, um, I, I, I kind of like, you know, just leave a little bit of a space at the top for navigation at like, you know, anywhere between 60 and 100 pixels is kind of, mm -hmm typical so i'm just gonna use a invisible little block to kind of show that you know, just to basically have this area 
And um, we know that we need our logo on here, of course. Um, and it can, because we have a little bit of space, it can be a little bigger. So maybe, maybe it is a little bigger for right now. Um, in terms of margin on the side, um, I kind of like, I don't know, oh, maybe a hot, maybe a, maybe 120. 120 will give us like a, um, a, uh, I can't tap it over. Come on. There we go. 120. Um, this will, this is like a setup for if we're on a 1440, um, canvas, this looks like a 12, uh, mm -hmm. 12 column grid. So, um, I can do another one on this side. I can't do any math. I, I can't do math though. So I have to use help all the time. So uh, I'm just going to make a block that's uh, 120 and then I'm going to drag it to the other side. I, th I think that's actually like, this is, <laughs> this is such a pro tip because you're going to yeah. burn so much time doing mental math. Yeah. Like, I, 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 okay. You know, what's funny is um, I was, I was very bad at math uh, growing up and, um, but I was really good at geometry, which is, you know, spatial design and uh, i was really good at calculus for some reason which is also spatial design so 3d type stuff but stats algebra no but um even basic arithmetic i'm like because somebody be like what's this times this and i'm like uh i don't know <laughs> um but uh and i remember i was thinking to myself like oh i'm just going to become a designer because then i won't have to use math at all but do you know that i use math every day you never get <laughs> away from it i use it every day i'm like constantly like oh i need to divide this angle into thirds so what's like this divided by three and then like what's the angle of the interior of this hexagon so i'm just like oh my gosh constantly doing that so, um, so. i whenever i find myself in that situation my my first instinct is to just google it like yeah, no. yes, <laughs> i'm like exactly. i'm like formula to divide math and usually yeah, somebody's I, built a, a calculator for me and I just use that calculator and it tells me what my angles are and then I'm then I'm done. I literally had to Google the other day. I was like, what is the interior angle of like of a hexagon? Because I was like, I'm not even sure really what the angles are. So I had to Google it because I had to I forgot even now why I needed to know it. But um that kind of stuff I'm I'm constantly having to look up. And then I never remember it and I have to look it up again. So yeah, you, you gain efficiencies and you lose them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so there's a, a good basic. question in chat, um, oh, yeah. which is like, should you design the website based off of colors in the logo? Um, yeah, I actually um, think that the logo is usually, usually comes first. So anytime you have something that is the start of a brand identity, this is a great way to build a color palette. And that's exactly actually what I did. Um, I don't know if you're following me. I did it on let me, this Let me page. start. Yeah. So we have all of our color iterations of this logo. So we have this beautiful teal version. Mm -hmm. We have this, which I nicknamed tomato. And I made us just a very, very simple color palette. So I called this one dark and you can see over here, um, the color style and it'll give you the hex code. So we can now apply that to, you know, anywhere on the website, if we use this color style. Well, um, and, and they're saved as named colors. Yeah, so we can, saved. we can pick so them from the dots here, too. Yeah dark teal and tomato. I actually created mm -hmm. those right before we jumped on just because I wanted to, you know, streamline this a little bit. But yeah. now if I want to apply this color anywhere onto design, whether I'm making a button, whether I'm creating an accent color, I'm doing a border on a photo, whatever, mm -hmm. if I want to change type color to this, I now have the ability to just quickly recall this color and mm -hmm. it's always going to be the right hex code. So there's not any you know, messy. I'm trying to make things clean for uh, the dev to build um, because I don't want there to be like a million um, colors that are just like a you know just a hair off of this teal well, color that we have. I want it to always be the right the right ones. <laughs> yeah, and and again, like because we've selected the that style. So if we were to to do a rebrand later, if I go in and I like click on yeah. where's my button. Oh, so if you go, if you select teal, what there's a little, me, um, do you have teal selected? Cause it's, it won't let me, oh, well, oh, maybe it won't let me do. It. Okay. There should be a little thing on this. See that? Oh, it's not working. Do you see the little Why thing is that's teal popping locked? Up? What oh, is happening? Weird. Why did that get locked? Do you, do you have it selected or something? No. Um, try selecting something that is, oh gosh, that's, that's very strange. What, I'm is, not sure what why. is that all about? What that is, is that odd. all about? I'm able to select it. Weird. Huh. Um, we'll just try with tomato and we can, we can pack that out later. Yeah. So, okay. So if I, if I were to like, well, let's say we were using little, um, tomato the little, here, the little button that appears on the side there that looks like sliders. Yeah. So if we, if we switch this out, we can switch it to tomato mm -hmm. and then I come out here and I'm yeah. like, all so right, tomato oh, is I know actually going to gonna be, Oh, I know how 
to do it. I remember how to do it. Yeah. So you go in there. Yeah. And you can select that and then, yeah, drag it around. So you're redefining that style. And we can see that um, it like redefine everywhere that we were using it. Got done. Yeah, so let me just, undo that. These little shortcuts just honestly, I mean, there is a little bit of setup with these types of things, obviously, but like really they, they're just, they take minutes in the beginning of anytime you're starting a project and they really save you a ton of time later. Mm -hmm. So, um, and just keep everything nice and clean so that when you're handing this off to the person who's building it, like, boom, there's not really any question about like, is this the right hex code? Did you mean it? Because it's a hair off of this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So um, these are just things that I like to do that are my own personal thing to like, just keep everything nice and clean. But um, again, like people work in a variety of ways. Like when I got started, I used to just be like, I mean, you can probably see on the side here, I have not been doing a good job of organizing in any way, shape or form the elements that I'm putting on this page. So they're all just like vector group, vector group, but you know, like homepage has like rectangle, rectangle. Like I sometimes come through and clean this up later just because, you know, I'm, I'm just, getting started and going through there's really no right or wrong way to do it it just depends on if you want to apply the time to get organized at the end or if you want to apply the time as you're going and so. i think it's it's important to call out too that like what what you're doing is you're trying to find the right balance of like doing it right versus doing it fast because if you mm -hmm. if you spend so much time cleaning and doing it right that you take like weeks and weeks to get something done then you you're burning so many hours on something that hasn't even been approved yet so a lot of times, you know, you, you go quick and dirty. And then once you know that it's the right direction, then you start to codify things and clean them up and name them and group them and turn them into yeah. symbols because you know and, that they're going to work. Otherwise, like yeah, why spend yeah. 16 hours making a perfectly organized comp and the client's like, mm, let's go in a different direction. You're like, cool. I'm glad I had spent all that time. Yeah, I honestly have had that happen more than I would love to admit where I basically made something beautiful and I didn't you know, decide to make a style out of it. And then they ultimately want to change it. And then so changing, I have to go through every single element because there wasn't a style applied. So mm -hmm. everything that I'm showing you right now in terms of like how I stay organized and try to save myself time is because I made the mistake already. Like, honestly, I've made I, every- I, I swear made so much, so much of efficiency and like what people would consider to be good working habits is just the way that we've coped with trauma as professionals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like we we did something that wrecked our weekend once and we're like, I'm yes. never doing that again. And then yes. now you have a good habit because you remember how much it sucks not to have that habit. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> wish that that's not how, like, I feel like that's how humans work so often. Where it's like <laughs> you, you end up like having to like go through the trauma of it to learn a lesson. Mm -hmm. And you can tell other people about this as much as you want to, but like, Ultimately, I do think that everybody is going to have to go through that trauma a little bit. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. I know that we're um, like at 15 minutes. Yep. There we go. Dragging that over. So yeah, now we got all our elements mm -hmm. um, and we have a little bit more room to sort of um, play with these elements than size wise. So um, what I might do here is, um, gosh, uh, I guess. I guess this can kind of, we can stick with the pretty responsive, you know, this can all be kind of centered to here. So that's the other reason, that's the other reason that I hide little um, things like this in here is if I need to like have something to like have a snap centered center to. So um, like now I can just click this, this, uh, this top nav bar and, and have things quickly centered to that just, mm. for, just for efficiency. So we can leave this the way that it is. I mean, it can, it can also be, it can also make it, you know, wider now. And this can be maybe, whoa. Oh, cool. Look at that. Did, did you see what Figma just did though? Yeah. Isn't it amazing? I love it. Oh, that was slick. They just automatically do that. I love it. Um, okay. So, all of these elements we'll just kind of throw on here. Um, the guy from, I, I, no, I'm not the guy from the future. I don't know what that is actually. The, yeah, I'm not sure what that is either. I, oh. <laughs> is that a, is that a, like, I, I'm not sure if I'm being trolled what or if that's future? an earnest question. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so yeah, we have our attendees here. Um, I guess, yeah, this is just the event page. Um, it, well, and one thing that's cool too, like if, if you don't mind me, like actually let me pull a copy because I had an idea yeah. about like riffing on this a little bit. So Definitely. now that we've got all this, um, this horizontal real estate, 
And now that I know that Figma, wow, that is cool that it just does yeah, that for you, right? Cool? So yeah. check this out. Now I can. Yeah, definitely. Like That's, we can pull this up and we get all this extra, this extra space. Definitely. Because later what ends up happening is like one of the things that we wanted to do was almost create like a um, gallery, a gallery. Yeah. And so that'll be below the fold or maybe it ends up being a separate page or something. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. But so, so now down here, placeholders, yeah, for for images or something like down here, you think? Yeah, let me. I'll. I'll. While you do that, I'm gonna look up some. Oh no. Okay. Some sandwich photos. I found a great sandwich photo that I just have to put in here because it made me laugh so hard. Let's see if it will let me drag it in. Uh oh. Oh, here we go. Um, let's see, what else do we want to put in here? Let's get another. <laughs> Sorry, I do. I saw it's it. so I, good. I know, I, I love it. Um, let's see, what else we'll do? Let's get another good sandwich in here. I love it. Oh, are you putting a hot dog in there? A hot dog is not a sandwich. I'm hot sorry. Hot dog, a ravioli, it's all sandwiches. Oh my gosh. Somebody asked in the comments if a crepe is a sandwich. And in, it I, is. I think a crepe is a sandwich. Yeah. I don't think a hot dog is a sandwich though. They're literally the same thing. I, I just, I, I, I think it's a matter, matter of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can maybe throw these here and then give them like a title. So, um, Oh, what that? Uh, maybe maybe it's like a little riff on this, and it's like um, photo stream. I don't know. Look or even gallery. even just like photos from this event, or or like sand, you know, meet the sandwiches. Like I, I think the the less seriously we take this, the more fun it's going to be, right? Yeah, I love it. Or maybe maybe it stays light. Um, yeah, so I just had an idea down here. Oh, did you? Yeah. So what, something I was thinking is like this, this mask is not as noticeable as I want it to be. Yeah. And so, uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh sorry. She okay. Go. No, it's all right. It's, uh, I feel bad. Everybody's witnessing how much screen time my child has, but um, I'm telling you, if you're kind of a toddler right now uh, and you work full time, um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. There's just like sometimes no other way that you can uh, get your life, you know, going. I don't know. Um, so you were saying something in, uh, sorry, I did watch the, the thing that you did with Marissa leading up to this and you mentioned something about Fauna or maybe it was another, it's a, pro, uh, you know, a third party, something that um, you, you use to Maybe it was a form that you do use to like enter details from somebody. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm thinking and talking at the same time. Um, something you would use to text to, to get the photo to appear here. Uh -huh. Is that kind of something that, that would appear just in these, these columns if you, if you text the photo to a certain phone number to kind of implement that? Uh, yeah, so we can use, I, I might, I might try to rope um, my friend Nathaniel Akenwa into coming back on the show. Uh, he works at Twilio, and so we would be able to hopefully build like a way that I could set up a phone number that if you text that phone number um, and you're associated with an event, mm -hmm. we would be able to basically you would like say, you know, I'm like as you sign up for the event, you would put in your phone number. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, if you text like the app would recognize your phone number and have it associated with an event that would it would then post the, the sandwich photo to. Um, and that would, you know, that would avoid this overhead of like having to create hundreds and hundreds of phone numbers, um, but also avoid the problem where if somebody got a hold of that phone number, they could just spam it with whatever they wanted. So it's kind of a, I, I, I think that I haven't really thought through it super hard, but I think that will work. Um, yeah. 
And then the, the URLs would be handled by, like the URLs are gonna be kind of secret, right? Like not secret in the sense that you have to log in to see them, but secret in the sense that we're not gonna like publicly show these events. They, you have to share it with somebody for them to, to get it. Um, so the photos are, are not private, but like also not search indexed or, or intended to be like discoverable. That's more like if you share it, it's there. If not, then it's, you know, then it's not. Gotcha. Un unlisted. That's a, yeah, exactly. Unlisted sandwich. It's a secret sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Let's see if this works. Um, so what I just did is, um, I don't know if you're uh, aware of material uh, design, but they have a free library of icons that you can use for things, and I use them all the time, so shout out to them. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure, I should have asked this in the beginning, but are we going to be able, are we having registered, so you register basically to use secret, the Secret Sandwich website, so you would be somebody who, like, you know, for example, is a user. So you would have your own avatar yeah. that you would fill out. You'd fill out details about yourself. So mm -hmm. then when you got paired up for an event, for example, if there were multiple events in the schedule, you would be able to, you know, adjust your details accordingly to have somebody fill out a sandwich for you. Exactly, so yeah. I'm guessing there's probably going to need to be a space at the top in the navigation for you to log into your profile, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So, um, and then there's probably also going to be navigation for looking at like the schedule mm -hmm. and I'm just doing this like really willy nilly in terms of like, you know, all right, there's going to be some nav at the top and I guess, um, we can do like, uh, I don't know, it was just a log in or I don't know the right way to do it right now. Yeah. I think this is where at this point we'd probably start looking at like, we, we need to get back into Marissa's um, UX flow mm -hmm. and start thinking about the, the outcomes, yeah. which like, yes. it, so what we've done is we've, we have effectively created like a, an aesthetic for this. Mm -hmm. We've got, mm -hmm. um, we've got some, like the branding is worked in. We have some little touches of the brand color. Like I, I took this, this avatar and like, my thought was that once you filled out your information, we would be able to put the this like teal outline around the photo mm -hmm. and then put the mask on you. Love um, it. So that it's a, it's kind of obvious like, okay, so this person is, is ready to go. We've got a couple people who still need to put their stuff in. Um, mm -hmm. And it also is like sort of gamifies it, right? Like you, once you complete your, um, once you complete your profile, you then get like the mask, right? And so it's mm -hmm. kind of, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but from here, what we would be able to do is we would be able to, like take this back, look at the the list of outcomes that we wrote up and yeah. start breaking down like which ones are we hitting and which ones are we not. So let's let's take a look. Cool. Um, so photo uploaders can post photos to the event. We talked about that. Um, sandwich eaters can add personal details. So that's going to be your uh, detail page. That'll be on the this detail page, page that'll be up here. Yeah. Um, we need to be able to uh, Party hosts can moderate photos, so we will have to design that. Um, photo browsers can view photos, so we just did design that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this part we haven't done, but like we're going to need a way to randomly assign um, like the people. I, and I think that yeah. that's honestly probably going to be once everybody has entered their details, you'll just get an email, or maybe a, maybe we do it all by text. Like you're you'll get yeah. a text message that says like, "Hey, everybody's entered their details. Are you ready to to draw your your sandwich?" like your secret sandwich E secret, secret sandwich E. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and so then, you know, you would be able to, to like pull that out. Um, yeah. So it looks like we've, we've kind of hit the major pieces. There are workflows that we're going to have to think through. A lot of that is going to be form related. Mm -hmm. So like probably a next step here would be to start thinking about what the form elements look like in this app. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, I think we, you know, we're, we're, we're up at time and I think where we've landed is a pretty good spot because now we know, like, we're going to roll with this teal. I think the teal looks great. We've got mm -hmm. some typography. We've got a, like, a general feel for things. It's, like, nice and minimal. I dig minimal look. Um, that's going to give us a lot of, a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from here, I feel like we could hand this over to Dev mm -hmm. and um, in development, like what we can do is get close and then we probably just have a pairing session 
like as we get to different checkpoints, like get yes. the developer and the designer in a room. We talk about like, hey, we started doing this. What do you think about that? And then um, Mina Markham, I, I learned this from Dan Mall. Uh, Mina Markham calls this pixel engineering, where the designer and the developer will just sit at a code editor and tweak. Yeah. Like, hey, what if yeah, we change this it. color? What if we made this font bigger? What if we, you know, move this to the left or rearrange this? And the, the developer will literally make changes with the designer kind of coaching so I that you get that. these beautiful I, outcomes. Yeah. And yes. it cuts, what I love, I love it. about it is it cuts this loop, right? So instead of me saying, here's my, here's what I've developed, and then you having to go and like screenshot that and redline it and do new comps and all that stuff, we just skip that whole step. We sit down together, we look at a computer so we could do it in Figma here like we've done remotely. Um, we could open up like VS Code or use something, you know, some kind of collaborative tool, Zoom screen share even. And I could just have my code editor open, tweak. You could be like, yeah, that looks great. Try it like this. And then I add a, I add a little thing and we, we refresh the page. And once we're happy, like we high five, you sign off, I go finish it up. And we've effectively shortcutted like two days worth of, of design back and forth by working together, which I love. I love that. I, what you're, what you're saying to me, you are preaching to the choir. I, or I really, really love getting in the same room as devs, as a designer. I love being able to have conversations with them about yeah. how, you know, we see this developing and being able to work in tandem and, you know, breaking down those silos really like there was like a period of time where, you know, we all were just kind of doing our own thing on our own time. And mm -hmm. they, you know, it was almost like people were asked to draw a cat from their memory, but nobody was able to like really look at anything that, that was tying it together. And, um, now we're able to kind of just, I mean, I think there's this trend that's working towards and design systems are certainly part been helping and been part of this, but just like being able to together work towards a common goal rather than working on a common goal. That's not, actively collaborate, you know, in collaboration. Mm -hmm. So it's so much more efficient to do this way. And it really makes me, I don't know. I just, I have a whole new appreciation for the people who are building the website, the, the dev side of it. Mm -hmm. I, it makes me want to learn to code. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, it is a fun time and, and, you know, it, it, it is that sort of thing where it's like, Hey, this is, this is the sort of stuff that breaks down those communication barriers. Like the, I feel like in companies where there's tension between different departments, like, Oh, the, the product team hates the marketing team, hates the design team, hates the development team. It's almost always because those teams don't interact. They, yes. they pass projects between each other through formal channels and they don't collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, and in companies where that's not the case, where we're doing like what we did today uh, and we, we sit in a room and we work together and we talk through concerns, then those teams always feel like they gel, you know, like they're, they're building things together they all take equal ownership of, of the project and it doesn't yeah. feel like, oh, the designers sent us this, this design that totally doesn't work in dev. It's, you know, it's not realistic at yeah. all. It's that I've never seen that happen when it's collaborative. It's the evolution of like saying, instead of somebody being, you know, siloed into the type of expertise that they're bringing mm. the subject matter, like, so somebody's a designer, it's like a label. Now we're all just stakeholders, right? We're all yes. stakeholders on a team working on a singular goal, which is the completion of a project. So if you look at it that way, it sort of just says, hey, it doesn't matter what skill set you're bringing to the table, it's all of equal value. And it will all, it takes all of us working in tandem to really push this up the finish line. So it's really just that change in mindset, I think that's really been helping. Somebody mm -hmm. had a question on here that I want to just quickly address. It was, you know, copy or get motivation for ideas um, mm -hmm. off Drupal. And 100% yes, I have no shame in saying that I have gone and looked at what others have done. Uh, if you want to be a nerd and talk about, you know, uh, Jurassic Park for a second, you know, you looked at what others had done and you took it and you, you know, built on it. And it's absolutely something that I look at daily to get inspired about trends that are kind of happening. Um, there's always new technology that people know about that are circulating that I want to know about too. And, uh, you know, you just have to kind of make, you know, stay on top of, um, you know, what others are doing. Um, I don't necessarily think it's copying. I think everybody is sort of building on what others have done in the past. And this is always in the pursuit of optimizing something. So yeah. yes, the answer is yes. Um, well, and, and another thing to like, something that really stuck with me is I, um, I had, uh, 
Joe who goes by Steel Tip Dub on, and we were making music together. And one of the things that that uh, let me find that episode actually. Um, one of the things that he talked about that I thought was so interesting was that like he almost always starts out a beat by copying something that he likes. Like he'll he'll to the point that he's like trying to do it exactly the same. And what he said is like it doesn't matter if you find a drum beat that you like and you start making that drum beat. There is no way you're going to make the same song. Like you you have a style. So unless you're literally ripping off the sounds, or or in d- the case of design literally ripping off the design you know which like you have to be mindful of that you can't go pixel for pixel with something oh yeah but if, if you look at like if we look at this and we go, oh <laughs> look how cool this is this like kind of mosaic look right mm-hmm. i want to do a mosaic look as long as you're not in here stealing exactly what they did if you're if you're taking inspiration saying yeah we could do a mosaic mm-hmm. you're gonna create a different feel um, and now there, there's like a, a huge sliding scale of derivative, you know, and, and I think if you look at if you look at the world of web design, you'll you'll find that like things start to feel similar. And if you if you kind of look through, like you can see where the trends are, you know, we can see yes. that right now these big, chunky illustrations, they're showing up everywhere. But like, look at this. This is a really similar illustration to this. Yes. And these are two very different feels, two very yeah. different experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, and like same thing over here. Here's another another example of that, like kind of flat, bright, colorful illustration. Very different experience from these two, but ultimately they're very derivative if you think of it that way. Like the yeah. design community is always pulling experience from itself. Um, yeah. And so you know don't don't feel ashamed of that. Like riff remix. That's what art is 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 taking an inspiration and playing and and messing around. I mean, I will say this is like, I know we're out of time, but I just want to make this last kind of comment. But um, I, I would say almost like, so what we're working on essentially is a, a derivative of a brand design that was already developed. Like people have already been working on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maggie's been working on this. Marissa worked on this. So we already have like already a collective brain trust, if you will, of like where this is coming from. So I'm not even coming up with this originally. Like this has already been inspired by Maggie and Marissa. And that is building on something to really create like a a cohesive whole. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of ways that you can take an idea and apply it in so many different mediums, right? So uh, really what I, who I really admire, and I, I have done work for this too, is, is people who just do brand and identity design, people who take the idea of a company, of a business, of a startup, and they're like, how do we best represent this visually to the mm-hmm. world and create a logo from scratch? Really, like that is the really, the very root, the very seed of what we're making here. That's where this all comes from. And so taking inspiration from, you know, what the company is, what the idea is, and how that's represented visually by what Maggie and Marissa had created, and expanding that further into what the website looks like, you know, this is all something that is part of one part of an idea that continuously gets built upon by the people who are involved. So, totally, yeah, cool. Well, yeah. So with that, I think we we can we can wrap this up, um, Leslie. This has been an absolute pleasure. It's always fun to to create things and like yeah. doing the design stuff is is such a blast. Um, so thank you to Elliot for doing all the work. Um, yeah. we, <laughs> I actually did nothing. This was her on the screen the whole time. She's a, she's a prodigy. Um, uh-huh. so Leslie, is there anywhere that you want people to go if they want next steps or if they want to uh, keep up with you anywhere? Uh, you can follow, you can go to my website. Um, honestly, it just talks in detail a little bit about, um, projects that I've worked on in the past. Okay. Uh, I would call myself a multidisciplinary designer where I've really kind of dabbled in all different types of design. So I've done user experience design like Marissa, I've done brand identity and development like Maggie. And you can see a lot of that stuff on my website. Uh, so right now I'm doing um, service design. So that's a lot of strategy involved with uh, you know retail and environments. Um, but uh, I also do illustration, which you can see some of it there. This is yours? Um, I've really kind of hacked all over. So awesome. um, yeah, feel free to just send me an email. My contact information is on my website. If you have any questions, um, I'm happy to um, tweet a bit more. I, I could, you know, maybe I will get on the Party Corgi, you know, site and, and kind of join that community and tweet a bit um, because I do really love to talk to people about this process. And um, if anyone has any questions for me about this or where I came from, or I'm happy to talk. I, I love to... I love to connect with people about this kind of stuff. So awesome. 
Yeah. Well, cool. So um, with that, Leslie, thank you so, so much. Chat, stay tuned because we've got some fun stuff coming up. Let me look at the schedule here real quick. Um, we have a, uh, a really great episode. Oh, I haven't put it on the website yet. Cassidy Williams uh, is going to come on the show on Tuesday. I had to reschedule the, the Tuesday episode. Um, so Cassidy is going to come on and we're going to build a Twitch game. So that one, it's very important that you show up live because it's a very interactive episode. We're going to be doing stuff with the chat. You're going to be, uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's one of the silliest things that we've done. And like, you can drop boops from the ceiling in, in the chat right now. So uh, the, it's, it's even sillier than that. It's going to be a blast. Uh, then we have subscription management in Jamstack apps. This is also going to be an absolute powerhouse of an episode because um, this is, if you want to start a website and you want to let people pay you and you want them to pay you every month, this is the episode for that. It's going to teach you everything you need to know to make that work. Um, and then we've got Ryan Warner, who is a longtime friend of the show, excellent person, uh, You know, taught me everything that I didn't pick up about Fortnite. He's going to come in and we're going to do a deep dive into Figma. So a lot of what we did today was kind of assumed knowledge about Figma. We were just jumping through stuff. Ryan is going to walk us through like basics. He's going to get oh, us I'm really, really, it's, it's a good, it's going to be good, good stuff. Um, so next week is going to be a great week. Make sure you check the schedule, get tuned in. Um, <laughs> I love that. We, look at all like, these boots. I know you can't even see the stuff. I'm doing. <laughs> let, let me get Ryan peeked up here. There he is. Look at, look at Ryan. Get, let's get Ryan on the, on the screen. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's it's going to be a great, like an absolutely great couple of weeks coming up. Uh, like, oh, look at this. Charlie's coming on. We're going to do mind control. Um, I can't wait. So with that chat, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming out and hanging out with us today. Leslie, thank you so much for, for spending your time. Elliot, thank you for running the show in the background. Um, and we will raid. And that's our show. Thanks, y'all. Right. We'll see you next time. Thank you.